This video is showing you how to figure out the length of your side piece if you're creating a cylinder or any other shape that you want to have a little bit of a raised side. So for the cylinder here that's already been sewn, you can see that all the way around it's a cylinder. There's the circle bottom. There's only one seam because what I did was fold the paper over and or the fabric over and just do one stitch and then flip it inside out. And then to finish this, I would go ahead and cut another circle, same size as this one, and I would sew that here. You can do, I'm mostly gonna be talking about the cylinder shape here, but you could do the same idea with any other shape, so a heart or anything else. So, uh, if I wanted a cylinder uh, probably about this big, maybe a little bit, tiny bit bigger, I would decide on the shape I was gonna make my circle first. So this shape, the, the size that I wanted this to be. So, I would take, either draw out a circle with a compass, or you can just find something round to, to trace. I'm just gonna trace this shape right here. So of course, if you were doing this on your pattern paper, you would do it as far over in the edge. I'm doing mine a little bit off from the corner so that you can see it well in the camera. So there we go. So what I'm saying is that I want my cylinder to be about this big. Remember with our seam allowances, it would end up being about the size of a circle in the middle. So now I need to figure out how long my long piece needs to be. So this is the tricky part. There's two ways to do this. You can either just measure with a string and use a ruler, or you can do math. So, I will show you the math way first. So if you're doing it uh, using math, you need to figure out the diameter, which is basically straight across the circle. So, you don't have to draw a line, but I'm gonna draw a line here just so you can kind of visualize. So mine is two and three eighths. Just to make my math easier, I'm gonna round up to two and a half. So again, this line right here, that's a di that's the diameter. It was two and a half inches. And now to figure out the circumference, I would do uh, the diameter times pi, so 3.14. So I would do for this particular circle, 2.5 inches times 3.14 which equals 7.85, about. Um, so that means that this entire circumference is 7.85 inches. So with a ruler, that would be this distance. And it doesn't seem like it's actually that long, but it is. So then, remember I said that when you're sewing, you're gonna have a little bit of a uh, overlap. So let me flip this. I unstuffed it and flip it. So you can see that right here there's a little bit of an overlap. So that is, uh, mine's really skinny, but just to be safe you want to add about half an inch to one inch. Um, I will add, maybe I'll round this up to eight and then I'll just add a half an inch from there. So I'm rounding up to eight. Um, I'm adding half an inch. And so now that, maybe I'll just put a line through the middle here. So now that is going to equal eight and a half inches. That's how long I'm going to make my side strip. So now of course I would take my ruler. Again, you would do this at the far edge of your paper. I'm gonna measure eight and a half inches. So there's eight and a half inches there. Then you would decide how far up you want it to be. Remember, everything needs to be an absolute minimum of an inch and a half. So say you wanted a kind of a, maybe you're making a snout and so you just kind of want to pop it out a little bit. We'll just say that's what we're doing here. So I would measure one and a half inches. Finish up that rectangle.
And there we go. This is my side piece that I would fold in half, do one stitch line. Once that's done, then I would sew it along here. If you want it to be taller, so for example, this one right here, that's about four inches tall. So if I was doing this one, and I, want, I wanted this to be the same size as this, I actually would have had to go all the way down to four inches. So the rectangle would have been much bigger. So it just totally depends on uh, how tall this distance, depends on how tall you want it to be. This distance is whatever you figured out the circumference to be. The other way, if you're not into math, which is fine, is that you could take just a random piece of string um, make sure you have a mark for where you're starting. So I'm just going to start right there and you just gently lay it around. Make sure it's as close as possible to the actual circle size and then kind of pinch where they connect. So as we see, let me get my ruler out again. That went to, again, seven and uh, about three quarters inches. So that was the exact same amount. And again, remember I needed to add about half an inch to an inch to the length, because that's my little, so that I can sew my seam. So remember I'm gonna need a seam about that big, but it's on both sides since it's getting folded over. So that would be the perfect length. So if you wanted to do something, so that's how you do a cylinder. And if you need a top and bottom to your cylinder, you would do times two here. This one, so you would need two of these when you're cutting them out. This one, you would only need one piece. Again, because you're folding it in half and stitching these two sides together. If you wanted to do, uh, again, any other shape besides a circle, the math isn't going to work, but just use the string. So again, I would just figure out my starting point. I would wrap my string all the way around. So this string, when I stick it on the ruler, is much longer. Let's see, that one's 14 and a half. And then again, I'd add about half an inch. So for if I was doing this particular size heart, I would make sure that my entire rectangle is 14 and a half, I'm sorry, 15 and a half inches long since I had to add that extra inch. Uh, if you are doing something like this, especially if you have, so if I was doing one this size, I would actually have to tape two pieces of to paper together. If you're doing a bigger circle, I drew a pretty small one. If you're doing a bigger circle, you also would have to tape two papers together. So just go ahead and do that if you need more space.